Greetings and welcome to bnd.biz. My name is Alan Thorne, and in this movie I want to show you how you can use your own custom cursor for Unity games. Take a look at the Unity project that is here in front of us inside the editor. This project can be downloaded from our website, but all of this project was put together using completely free assets from the Unity Asset Store, so thank you very much, Asset Store. But in this game, when I press play on the toolbar and I'm presented with the game display, I can use my mouse cursor to move over these enemy characters to shoot on them in a laser gun style game, and eventually they will be destroyed and explode. So effectively, the aim of this game is simply to shoot the moving enemies inside the scene. Now, in order to do that, I moved my mouse cursor over the enemy and I clicked to shoot. But you'll notice from the viewport here that we're using the default system cursor. This is the cursor that comes with the operating system. It will be slightly different if you're using a Mac compared to Windows, but in either case, you're going to get the default cursor. Now this really, let's be honest, is pretty boring. It's not consistent with the aesthetic for our game whatsoever. So what I want to do is to replace this cursor with the texture inside our project panel and use that as the cursor instead. Now, there are many different ways you might want to approach this problem and each one will eventually work, but some can lead you into a world of hurt and headache and I really don't recommend them. For example, you might think that a good solution would be to create a canvas object as part of the UI, and then to attach an image object to that, and then use the image to move that around on the screen, showing the cursor image. Now, you can do this, but I really don't recommend it. Instead, Unity comes with a built-in cursor class that I'm going to be using instead it's really easy to use, and I'll show you here exactly how to use it step by step to create your own custom cursor. So I'm going to delete the canvas object here, and instead I'm going to create a completely new script file to create a cursor class. So I'll move to the project panel, and I have a folder here called scripts, which is where I'm going to be storing all the scripts for this project. I'll double click the scripts folder, right click and choose create, and choose C sharp script. Now take care what you name your class here. I'm going to call this cursor custom, or rather actually, let's back to front. Let's try to choose custom cursor and press enter on the keyboard to accept those changes to name the file custom cursor. I'm then going to double click that to open it inside mono develop here. Now this is going to be a pretty short script, but it's really powerful. You can use any texture as a cursor that you want to. So I'm going to start here by deleting the update function. We won't be needing that. The only thing we'll need right at the top is a reference to the texture that we want to use. So I'm going to call this public texture 2D. So I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. That's the data type that we want to use for our texture. And then I'll give this a name, which is going to be cursor text, like so. Going to save the code inside the start function. There are several properties that we want to set. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to choose cursor visible, and then I'm going to choose equals true to force the cursor to be visible here. This is going to make sure that we always see the cursor on screen. The next thing I'm going to set is the lock state of the cursor. Now we don't technically need to do this, but I'm going to provide it in any case. It is going to define how the cursor is allowed to move on the screen. We can restrict it to the confines of the window, we can prevent the cursor from moving at all, or we can allow the cursor to move wherever it wants. And it's this latter option that I want to permit for this game. So I'm going to choose cursor, lock state, and then the lock state has a range of different options we can choose. We have confined, restricting it within the window, locked, locking it at the center of the screen, or none, allowing the cursor to move anywhere. None is the default value, but I'm going to provide it here just to be safe. In the third line, I'm going to actually set which texture we want to use as the cursor image. So I'm going to choose cursor, and then choose 
set cursor, and this is a function which requires three parameters. The first parameter here is the texture to be used for the cursor. So this is going to be an image that we'll specify, and we already have an image in the project that I'll show you shortly. I'm going to grab the cursor texture to place that as the first parameter. And the second argument is going to be the pixel location on the texture that is the texture's anchor point. When we click on the screen to click with that cursor, this is going to represent the actual mouse X and Y position. So in this case, it's going to be at the dead center of the cursor. We're going to be creating a crosshair kind of cursor that allows us to shoot and aim at targets. In this instance, the hotspot of this cursor is at the very center. So in this case, I'm going to select cursor texture, dot width divided by two, half the width of the texture, and also half the height of the texture. Actually, you'll notice I'm specifying this here as floats. It should actually be a vector. So I'm going to be creating vector two, and for the X value, it's going to be the width and the cursor texture height divided by two. Let's just make sure I type that correctly there. Height two, like so. That provides our second parameter, which is the hotspot vector. The third parameter, I'm simply going to leave this as cursor mode dot auto, allowing hardware acceleration for our cursor so that we can get the best performance. So you can see in writing this entire statement here, we enable the cursor to be visible, we allow the cursor to move anywhere on screen, and then we set the actual texture that we're using for the cursor. I'm going to go ahead and save this code here with Command S and just minimize that and return back to Unity here to return back to the editor window. Now we have a cursor class. I'm going to attach this to an object in the scene by choosing Create Empty. And I'm simply going to name this object here to be Cursor. And I'm going to reset it back to the world origin. It doesn't really matter the location that you specify for this. And then I'll drag the custom cursor on to this cursor object so we can see it here. Now we get access to the cursor texture property allowing us to specify a texture to use as the cursor. And I'm gonna go hunting for a cursor. So in the asset packs folder, I'm going to look at the SMC pack, which again is provided for free from the Unity asset store and take a look at some of the icons that we have. So actually there's really nothing in this folder here, but I'm gonna use this cursor here Number one is going to be my crosshair cursor. I'm going to select that texture. Now, there are several things you want to make sure about this texture when you choose it in the project panel. If you're going to be using this as a cursor, as we are, you want to make sure that the texture type here is set to cursor. Nothing else should be selected. It should be set to cursor. In addition to this, by moving down here, I want to make sure that generate MIP maps is deactivated and that read and write enabled is activated. It's critically important that those two settings are set in that way for the best performance. And in this case, these two settings are. So I'm going to select the cursor object here and drag and drop my cursor into the cursor texture slot to assign it like so. In doing this, by pressing play on the toolbar and making sure this object is activated straight away from the level beginning, you'll see that inside the game tab, we're going to have the new cursor displayed inside the viewport. And as I move this around now, you can see that we're having that image chosen and used as our system cursor. So that was really straightforward. That's how you can configure Unity to use a completely custom cursor, a texture of your own making in place of the system cursor. I can easily quit the playback of the game here simply by choosing Command P or Control P on a Windows PC, or I can still press the play button here using the default system cursor, which appears as I move outside of the window. But when this is played full screen, we're going to get our custom cursor full screen too. So I'm going to stop playback here, and there you have it. It is way, an easy way to create a custom cursor in place of the system cursor. Thank you for watching. I've been Alan Thorne, and this has been part of bnd.biz. Be sure to check out our website and look over our great video tutorial content for game development.